Right. All right, guys, welcome back. It is currently 9.28 a.m. Eastern time, and we are on live, okay? Right now, we are seeing US 30. Hopefully, it will print this red candle in the next 39 seconds. Then from then, I am expecting it to go to the upside, all right? Why do we see it going to the upside? All right, let's go ahead and break it down very fast. We only have like a couple minutes. Number one, I told y'all, right, yesterday, um, before I left the, the live stream, I'm not really going to check it right now because we don't really have that much time, but I'll check it right after the move happens. So we said if it dropped beyond this point, 33893, TP1, TP2, and if it went up beyond this point, then this would be our entry, TP1, TP2, all right? I remember that clear as day. I don't know if y'all remember that, but I do, and it went ahead and dropped not only 30, 50 pips, uh, but barely any drawback, and actually dropped around 200 pips from... Um, Hopeful that you guys were able to get in on that. Now, over here on the one minute time frame, uh, it's a lot different. From the one hour, one hour, we wanted it to drop into the support area, which is support. Look, support, 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 support. And over here, it would look like support as well. Yes, very nice. Now, when you open up the indicator, look, eight in the morning. 14 right 14 would be 2 p.m so 2 p.m right here 14 that's divergence okay so if we were to draw a trend line from here going straight down it would have to cross over through here it went up around 150 cent seven pips and went back down so i'm expecting it to take off now in one minute to the upside which would be great the first red candle has been printed which is right here Hopefully it shoots through here, guys. That's a market execution to buy. If it starts to dump to the low side, then that's fine. As long as it shows some more divergence and we'll be on the pathway to start buying it either way. 9.30 has opened. Cling, 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 cling. Bells have opened. Let's see where the direction goes to. I, I'm assuming that it shall go to the upside. Uh, with time, even though it does, even though it reaches to the downside and grabs some support at this level, I still see it moving on to the to the upside. Okay, we've been seeing divergence now since seven in the morning. So either this is a bearish pattern, and it's going to do exactly what it did yesterday, where it kind of just, um, you know, it went up, then showed divergence, and then continued to dump, or you know, from seven in the morning yesterday, which was around here, it just Fell a little bit more, then 9.30 opened, went up, and then crashed down. Today, we see it extending to the downside. Let's see how much further it wants to go. This does look like distribution uh, phase instead of accumulation. Accumulation would be right over here. And it went up, climbed up. Distribution now falling downward. But again, if this is still valid, then it'll still be showing divergence and we'll be waiting it out. Let's see what happens, guys. I would have wanted it to have green candles right here since it was already showing divergence and for it to take it off to the upside, but it looks like it's not that plan right now. Japan 225 looking about the same, right? There's, there's divergence right here on the bottom. So let's see, there might be a mid reversal and that'd be fire. Right now from here to here, Divergence is showing. As of now, it's 
still diverging and how is it still diverging because this point of interest is still lower on the RSI than whatever this is okay so as long as this point of interest is still lower than this one okay it's still showing divergence still hasn't climbed up to this piece of the RSI okay to hit this target profit area this this training wheel over here which we would color it green all right, for this is our target profit, goes back up, hits it, we're happy, okay? It extended down, what did it do? It touched around this level. Now I see it hopefully recovering. It is doing a downward channel, but again, and last time, RSI divergence is still showing. This is the point of interest that reached all the way to 17. Right now it's about 19 on the RSI, so let's just give it a little bit of patience. Let's Go ahead and bop through. So this is my second US 30 chart. SPX 500, what are you showing? All right, so it's also showing that point of interest at seven, but it's also showing some divergence right here, which is exactly what US 30 is also doing. So let's go ahead, chart this up. This all the way to the side, last level of resistance. All right, so do, 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 do. Green followed by red candle right there. Should drop. All right, that's fine. That's okie dokie. Again, point of interest is over here. It is lower than whatever's happening right now. And that gives us a good validation that at some point this channel will be broken and go back to the upside. That's what I see happening right now. Damn, divergence on the 10 minute for a sell around London session. And then it started to sell now. It sold, but this is parts of resistance, which now is new support. So let's see it grab some support at this area and perhaps move back to the upside. But let's give it some time. Let's look at NAS 100. What are you showing with the girls? All right, so NAS 100 looks like as well showing divergence. Not from 7, though, like, uh, like our other pairs from 7.30 in the morning. It's actually just showing divergence down over here from 9 all the way straight through, okay? This piece over here is the lowest piece at 9 in the morning, and this is 9.32. It's still lower, so it is a point of interest. So let's see if indices want to go ahead and pump back up after this downfall. All right, last point of resistance, green followed by red right at the wick. Okay, you can even kind of shave it off if you wanted to, just that, just that piece of the wick. Wait for the breakout to the upside and go ahead and get those 30, 50 pips, all right? Let's go back up. Let's see what US 30 is doing. All right. It's catching a little bit of consolidation to the side. Let's wait it out a little bit longer. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and look at the news because I haven't really been uh, looking at Forex Factory right now. I just kind of dropped off my wife and came back uh, to do the live stream. And then I need to get back off around like 10, 11. Um, but yeah, that's because I have stuff to do today. It's very important. You know what I mean? All right, Salem, salam, hey y'all. What up, a pilot? I hope you're doing wonderful. It's beautiful. Uh All right, cool, cool, cool. What's up, a pilot? What's up to all of you guys live streaming right now from wherever you find yourselves? Let's go. Shit is pushing back up. Let's look at the other markets. Do, do, do. SPX 500 pushing up. Let's look at NAS 100. NAS 100 also pushing up. All right, it also showed divergence. But this is new low, okay? So this new low, now we have to wait for a red candle to then be able to place that trend line and then wait it out. Why? Because this is a new low. I repeat, new low. So we're waiting for green, 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 followed by a red candle to then be able to complete that trend line and then break it to the upside. I know I don't have my steps right now on the actual screen on all of my indices, but guys, step one, two, three, and four, all right? Don't get tricked. This is the last red candle that showed divergence, right? That's still teeter-totter to the upside. It was still showing a higher low. This is our point of interest. This is a higher low. This is a lower low. This is our point of interest all the way back at 7.39 in the morning. Now, we, what we'd be waiting was green followed by red trend line from the last level of resistance. But since this is just taking off now, 
we're waiting for another red candle wherever that might print out i mean hopefully right here so we can literally just bloop like this we're not eating through any candles we're not piercing through anything we're grabbing it from the last level of resistance we're piercing through the wicks that's okay just don't pierce through bodies now let's hope and pray that right now in these 40 seconds this candle closes red and then consecutively it starts to pump to the upside all right let's see it happen let's see it happen hopefully it won't take off and hit 30 50 pips without giving us that red candle because that'd be sad but again for my advanced traders that would understand this strategy you'd possibly just be putting a market execution and quickly trailing your stock profit immediately because us 30 is very volatile you don't want it to pump back to the downside and rob your account okay that is not cool now what we're waiting for all right so let's wait like a good three four minutes on this Kind of give it a little bit of room to breathe. We have four minutes on the clock. Okay. I know that this camera kind of sucks a little bit. Oh, look, it's actually focusing pretty well. Damn, that's fire. All right. So four minutes on the clock. We're going to go ahead and give this out four minute, four one minute candles and just wait. Okay. Yes. I want to fucking press buy too, honestly. But again, you know what I mean? It's already up 33 pips. It possibly will smack 50, but hopefully. We'll show that first red candle so we're able to just get into this trade, all right? I'm not going to change the strategy, even though I would have possibly market executed at this point, just because I feel confident that this would go ahead and hit 30, 50 pips, considering the amount of divergence in as well. I wanted to see it recover anyways. That's what I was thinking since 9.30 in the morning. I'm like, this shit is going to buy at 9.30. But I wasn't just going to say to you guys, hey, uh, you know, on the premium and on the free uh, signals or free community chat, hey, guys, buy this right now at 930. I swear to God, it's going to go to the upside because you would have waited. 930 would have came over here-ish. You would have bought it. You've been up 135 pips. I know it would have been really fire. But at the same time, guys, I still need to draw out the strategy. I still need to stick, stay true to the strategy at all times because at the end of the day, then you guys do this shit by yourselves. You guys might F up, you know what I mean? Mess up and stuff like that. And then lose a trade and be like, what the hell did I did wrong? Okay. And I don't want that to happen. I want you guys to be able to understand this to the fullest extent. Right now, this is the last area of resistance, but you know what I mean? It climbed up a little bit taller than that. So let's just go ahead and grab it from the previous point of resistance, which is right up here. First red candle finally pumps through. Let's see if this pump was organic and it's going to continue to the upside or that's it. That's all it gave out. Now, I don't know if you guys were really paying attention to the daily yesterday and as well, uh, I mean, to the live stream yesterday and what we were talking about on the live stream yesterday because, I mean, I shared some good nuggets. We weren't able to go ahead and grab a fire entry. Um... But regardless, I did go ahead and set it, set it up for you guys. Okay, and the way I set it up was... Bang, bang, bang. Oh, yeah, Ethereum looking good. And the cryptos yeah. only continue to sell uh, through the week, and this is which was crazy. Right here. If it would have broken the zero, like, up and then down. There you go. So right here, it was climbing, right? Showing divergence around nine, nine something. And then we had uh, we had said that if it broke this line or this line, if it broke this line, the zero, right, to the bottom piece, that would be your entry for 30, now 50 pips. I'd like to be... I was being patient. I didn't want to take any trade and just, you know, I mean, lose it or whatever. Okay. Not sure. Okay. Like at the very end, we were talking about how we wanted to see US 30. Hold on. Right before I started doing the stocks, we were talking about US 30 and how on the daily it was just going to repeat itself over and over again. Each time that it does climb down with huge volatility, then there's a recovery candle. I'm not sure I'm where I said it, guys, but I did say it. You know what I mean? It's in there. Usually if I tell you I said it, it's there. You know what I mean? So on the daily, just have this in retrospective. Huge red candle, wick, green recovery. Huge red candle, wick, 
recovery. Huge red candle wick recovery. Huge red candle wick recovery. Huge red candle wick recovery, right? That's what we would want to see happen. Just literally the feds pumping in the money back into this and recovering it to the upside. Let's go ahead and look at that one minute chart. All right, so right now we can see how it bopped three wicks and back to the downside. So let's see it pass organically to the upside and show that it indeed wants to continue in this pathway to hit this box over here and also um, show divergence up on the 74 slash 75 point of the RSI over bot over here. Right now it hasn't really been showing that, but hopefully it will. Let's look at the other indices. Sometimes they take off without US 30. All right, SPX 500 also uh, doing the same play as 100. All right, so since this, this is perfect example of why um, I tell you guys that we have to wait for the next greens followed by red candle and we couldn't have just drawn it off this red wig, right? Chopped it off and then waited because you would have seen this and if you didn't understand the strategy, meaning that you would have been like, oh shit, it's already crossing over. That means buy it right now immediately market execution. You would have been wrong. The reason why you would have been wrong, and let's explain real quick on NAS 100. Hold on. The reason why you would have been wrong on NAS 100 for this trade outcome, which is why you don't take a market execution right off the bat. You need to wait and be patient until market gives it to you. Right here it says, find divergence, draw a trend line, wait for a breakout. Okay, this is not a breakout, guys. This candle pierced through but didn't break out of the trend line completely with the body all right and that's number one number two and the most important uh piece of information i'm going to give you is that since this dipped down recently on 9 30 and dipped down lower than before we need to wait for the next greens followed by red candle right so green followed by red if we were to draw the trend line here on this red wick we're eating through these candles, okay? We're not even going through the wick, which is acceptable. We're eating through the candle, not acceptable. So we would have had to just rearrange this, green followed by red trend line too tight, green followed by red trend line just right. Now you're waiting for the breakout to the upside and if it indeed happens, then we'll be throwing down those buy limits and then you'll be having your beautiful entry, okay? Besides this, uh, on the UF3, I'm still waiting for that recovery so that it could pop through these entries and still fill in that gap. I know it's taking a little while, but at the same time, um, I think this right here is where the gap happened, and that was a lot of resistance up here. So it was due for a little bit of a correction. Then again, it grabbed support right here in this area, okay, that we saw in the one hour. And now we see it recovering. Hopefully it'll continue to recover, maybe dump a little bit and then recover, 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 and then hopefully make that new high. When do I expect that new high? I don't know. Right now I have two YouTubers that I watch just to get my financial information in check. I watch Minority Mindset, uh, which I really like, which I really like. I like his information. I like his viewpoints and I like the way that he explains himself. And as well, clear value tax. I'm not sure if you guys have watched that before, but it's really good and I highly enjoy watching him as well. We'll go ahead. Hi all, what's up, one by the eye? Nice to see you back on the stream, brother. One more beautiful day. Let's get it. Let's do it. Hi all, please. Can you make a prediction analysis for Blackberry Limited? Thank you. Hi all, please. Can you write a prediction analysis for Blackberry Limited and Cardano? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, GST. Matthew, good morning to you as well. Let's go ahead and get that analysis going really quick. Now, uh, just before I do the Cardano and BlackBerry Limited, I did want to show you how we are anticipating this for as buy stops, okay? All of these greens, blues, greens, all of that would be buy stops to the upside for us to catch the move to fill in the gap and also go into new highs. When do I see that happening? As I was explaining, I wanted to quickly show you. I am going to be watching these two YouTube videos. Now, they do kind of contradict each other, but at the same time, right, that is what it is. So clear value tax, 
with the stimulus update, right? This guy is great at just explaining what's happening right now, um, you know, with the feds, what are they thinking, what's their next move, yada, yada, yada. That's clear value tax, all right? Can't go wrong with this guy, I promise you. This guy is awesome. Now, as we can see, there is a $3.5 trillion bill modifications and status. And in that uh, bill modification and status, there is going to be money being sent out to other states uh, of people working like taxi drivers and a bunch of other people that are going to receive stimulus packages. I think even homeless people or some shit I heard about that. That's fucking crazy. I guess not everyone's acceptable to get the stimulus uh, thing checked, but some people are, some people aren't. That's unfortunate, but I feel like that will push the market back to the upside, all right, when they do uh, perhaps give out a new stimulus package. Now, second guy that I like to watch is somewhere here. I mean, he was here just now before I clicked on that video. Where are you? Oh, right here, Minority Mindset. I love this guy. I love the way he explains himself. And as well, um, it's great, okay? He's predicting the market collapse, but I mean, who isn't predicting a market collapse, right? That's the talks of the town right now. Everyone's saying, hey, you know, markets, it looks like it's gonna collapse at some point very soon. You know, stay aware of that stuff, yada, yada, yada. I'm also saying it because of the daily. This is a great YouTube video to watch to educate yourselves on the current status of what's happening right now in the global economy. All right, now, Forex Factory, what's showing right now? 8.30 news, all right, let's see how that influenced the market. These were all low impact uh, files, portfolios, so it wasn't really that crazy. 10.30, another low impact coming in, but this is AUD, not USD, so I might not have direct correlation to our US 30 market. Now, tomorrow, September 22, shit's gonna get real, which I'm very fucking excited for tomorrow to see what these high impacts are gonna be, all right? Tomorrow, I think I have a little bit more time, so I might be trading, you know what I mean, from all the way to seven, maybe even all the way to 4 p.m., because I do wanna see what happens with this. Federal Reserve Chair will be speaking, FOMC statements, and as well, high impact folders at 2 p.m. and 2.30 p.m., so let's see what happens with gold, and as well, what happens to US 30. Tomorrow, September 22, Wednesday, Thursday, looks fucking crazy, right? Look at this. We have a shitload of news, a shitload of stuff. Yes, before 9.30, and it is in USD, but particularly, let's see how this affects our US 30 tomorrow. I mean, uh, two days from now, Thursday, excuse me, the 23rd, the 24th, right? We do have federal uh, federal. Fed Chair Powell speaks, okay, and you know when he when he speaks, the market really does uh, increase in volatility a lot, and it will be ten in the morning, so it will be literally thirty minutes after U.S. open at nine thirty. And you already know that nine thirty, there's always some pumps happening. So I'm very excited for Friday, for Thursday, and for Wednesday. For today, you know, it is what it is. I'm trying to catch. I'm trying to catch those thirty fifty pip climb. But on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I am trying to extend way more than just those 30, 40, 50 pips. Let's go back to US 30 on the one minute. And mother right? It literally passes through. It possibly already pumped up the fucking 50 pips. That's exactly what happens. Hopefully, you guys are also following on your end and not waiting for me to literally vocally be like, hey, buy it. Hey, this is where it crossed over. Hey, this, this, that because all this information is very important. I'm sorry for getting distracted, but at the same time, it's very valuable information. This would have been our buy limit right here, very tight, okay? We were waiting for it to literally break through this, that's what we said, and as soon as it broke through it, it would have been our game go for us to literally take the buy, 30, 50 pips up, it already hit TP one, two, and three at 80 pips, just that fast, guys. We are scalping the US 30, so there's no time for sleep on, you know, for sleep talking on this. You need to be aware, you need to be on the ball when we're trading these on the one minute time frame. all right? Look at SP, SP also did it. NAS 100 also did it. So our strategy is again, goaded, literally killing the markets every week that we're in here so far. Thank the Lord and Savior and thank to our intuition 
that might have happened yesterday, but we have not hit a stop loss since we've started streaming this month of September. And I'm super excited and super happy to be saying that with great deals of confidence because we have absolutely not hit not one stop loss since we started live streaming. And not only uh, for the indices on the scalping, right? Not only on the NAS, on the US 30, on the SPX, but also on our bigger uh, daily time frame signals, we've been calling out signals left and right. Everything has been valid. Everything has been going through. Our Bitcoin sell did not actually touch the sell limit, but that shit dumped. Okay, so little sad face that it did not touch on the daily sell limit as we were expecting it to um, through our divergent strategy. But again, you know, it did dump as we were expecting it. So every single call out we've made with analysis has been pushing through. Now, I'm not trying to get cocky. I'm not trying to boost my confidence to an extreme level where I might slip and fall and fuck up. But so far... We've been right, okay? We have not been capping. We've been literally calling out stuff left and right. I'm not quite sure how many other streamers, right, pop on this bitch and literally call out the whole market. I'm talking about stocks, metals, exotics, indices, cryptos. We're doing the most, right? We're doing everything. We're not just Bitcoin, crypto, uh, weekly trading market. I like, do you know how easy it is to give a weekly outlook on the market guys literally weekly time frame and just look at it oh it looks like it's gonna recover like it's not that hard guys all right weekly analysis is poopy caca anyone can do that shit. that is easy as balls harder is to trade intraday and as well scalping and getting it right you know let's say Let's not give ourselves 100, obviously, or 90. Let's say 80% of the time, right? People are happy with 80%. I'm happy with 80%. I know it's a higher percentage than 80%, but we don't want to sound self-centered and then be like, we are the best because there is a shitload of great traders out there that don't have enough recognition right now, you know? And, you know, we're, we're all climbing up together, guys. We're all getting it out the mud. You know, we're the up and coming underdogs coming into this market. I just have a unique strategy that I haven't seen anyone else trade because I made this up myself and I'm very proud of that shit. I take a lot of pride in my strategy because I made this. You know what I mean? I took a long time making this shit and it's fire. Look at that. Divergence from 7.30. Bam. More divergence. Bam. 9.30 open. We waited. Right, got on this live stream literally five minutes before market open. And what we say, we said, all right, this is going to drop. And if it drops and it shows, it continues to show divergence. And this tip is still higher than our point of interest down here at 17 on the RSI. This is up at 19. Okay, now we're just going to wait for the recovery. First red candles, draw our trend line. It looked like we couldn't draw our trend line, unfortunately, from this angle. Because, like, what type of fucking trend line looks like this, right? That ain't no fucking trend line, right? That looks weird as fuck. So we said we'll grab it from the previous point of resistance and just grab it at the red wicks. Now, red wicks went ahead and broke through as I was speaking about what YouTube uh, videos for you guys to watch, for you guys to market educate yourselves from reliable sources and not just Google information or Apple information or Bing information or news. You know what I mean? That... It's left and right or MSN Messenger. I don't know what the fuck you guys use. AOL News, you know what I mean? Bloomberg. Who knows what the fuck you guys watch. But those two accounts, Clear Value Tax and Minority Mindset, to me, are my favorite. They explain themselves to the T. You know what I mean? They're pretty OCD with what they do, which is exactly my my style of, of, uh, of operating. So I highly do enjoy it those two YouTube channels, which is why I felt the need to share that information with you. And we missed a little bit of the entry, but if you guys were, you know I mean, very aware and alert, as I had finished saying all of this, then you guys would have definitely hit 30, 50 pips on US 30, even hit 80 pips all the way up here. Okay, they did smack. It was a wick, so let's just say 50 pips, just to, you know what I mean, just because it's solid. Totally hit 50 pips on the nickel. Now what we'd be waiting for? Well, what I'd like to see is for price come up to this area, show divergence, and then 
grab the sell, you know what I mean, for time to come. Again, it's stupid early still. All right, yesterday, we left a little early because I was a little uh, annoyed of the market. I'm not going to lie. Yesterday, I was like, let's get on the live. Let's do this like every single other day. We went on the live. It showed like the tiniest bit of divergence here, and it literally pumped up like 300 pips. Now, let's look at this, all right? Double click on this. Do you see this? 8.30 in the morning. From 8.30 to here, it literally did sell a little bit more. And if I have to extend this for you guys to see, you know, I am OCD. I'm telling you, from here, 8.30 to here, it is indeed a lower closing candle. So by law, it would be divergence, period, because this is lower, higher, but this is higher, lower. Opposites, boom, boom. And this should took off to the upside right after we would have possibly got an entry around over here because red followed by green from the last level resistance we have to have to draw the trend line this way so it would have bought up like around 200 pips and after that right more divergence you see that we did draw this out and we did draw the trend line but we left um we left the scene, guys. I did log out around 11, 10, 30-ish in the morning. I'm not quite sure how to actually, you know what I mean, like proof to validate that because on the live stream, it doesn't show the time clock on there. But I promise you, we got off around this level over here. And we said that if it did cross over, that'd be a sell. Not only did it cross over and show divergence, guys, like I cannot repeat this more times. When it shows divergence, guys, you need to take it upon yourselves. You need to start, even if it's a paper trading, right? Even if you put this shit on a demo, if you don't put it, if you don't put it on the live, but if you don't see me online and you're on the one minute on US 30 and you're seeing that divergence, or let's say I leave you off with the divergence and I leave you set up with everything, all right? Stay patient, stay looking at the charts, all right? Once it happens, once that crossover happens to the trend line, you know that our step one, two, and three, and four have activated Guys, hold that trade, all right? Even if it's on the demo, even if, if you're paper trading, even if it's just for shits and giggles, even if you're just like, all right, you know what? I just want to see whether or not his divergent strategy is goaded or not. I want to see where it might take me. I want to see what might have happened if I would have taken this trade. Guys, take the trade, okay? And if you do it wrong, just come back to the live stream the very next day. I'm going to be live streaming tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and next week, the whole week to finalize September. And guess what? Hopefully, in good faith, that everything goes well, you know, according to my planning schedules, October will be another beautiful month that we will be live trading here for free on TradingView. I can't stress that enough. I'm not going to be spoon feeding you and be like, here's the entry. You guys made money. Yay. I'm happy for you guys because you guys are not children. All right. We are grown adults, right? It has, you have to be a grown adult. Even if you, if, even if you're only 18, you're an adult, you're an adult. All right. To trade in the market system, you need to have a license. You need to be over a certain age. You need to have all these things. So if you guys are minorities, you know, 16, 17 year olds, well, you know, if you're treating yourselves as adults, then you guys are adults too. And as adults, we need to take and hold ourselves accountable, hold ourselves accountable, especially if you're not paying me a premium monthly mentorship, right? Of $60 at the very least, you know, that's my premium, by the way, you know, so if you're not really paying me and stuff like that, I'm not, you know, you can't really hold me accountable for all of this shit. I'm giving it to you for the free. So hold yourselves accountable and trade, even if it's on a paper trading, even if it's on a demo but do it, set it up, send me a chart on the free community. If you're not part of our premium, if you're not part of the premium, join today. If you're not part of it and you want to continue kind of, you know, wiggling around your tentacles and being like, all right, I'm, I'm gripping the divergent strategy. I like it. You know, it seems to be very easy. I like the way that he looks at it. Awesome. All right. Chart up charts, throw them on the free community chat again. The way to go to my free community for every one of y'all that haven't been part of the free community just yet, it's on my website, the link for you guys to be able to join. My link is jacobnets.com. That is my website right here quickly just to kind of uh, pass it in, jacobnets, and just at a dot .com. On the comment section, I went ahead and wrote it verbatim, jacobnets. All you have to write is dot .com right after you write jacobnets. 
and it will show you to this website. This is my website. This is what we offer on the premium. This is what you'll get for the paid membership. All right. Bing, bing, bing. This is a little bit about me before the mustache. Right now, my mustache is sleeping because unfortunately, we got up really early. So we weren't really able to shape it up. But this is what I think of all of you. And this is literally my little spiel. You know what I mean? Synchronicity to its finest. You guys finding yourselves on this channel for the very first time. Welcome in. All right. Go ahead and give that follow on the free community. Go ahead and chart up those charts with divergence and then print them out on the free community and send them. Tag me on there so that I'm able to read it, look at the analysis, and then give you a very coordinated analysis on that. If it's wrong, I'll tell you why it's wrong. If it's not wrong, then I'll go ahead and tell you why it's right. Okay. Email sent earlier through Jacob Nets. Yes, absolutely. One bad eye. I did get that email and read it as I was driving through the highway back home going 80 miles per hour. I know that's pretty fucking crazy, but at the same time, we did do that. That is the truth. I did read your email. Thank you for sending it to me. I will give you a little bit more information of how to join in and as well to mentor you to perfection. I am so happy that you like this strategy. Uh, you know, we did create it ourselves. So who better to learn the strategy than the actual OG, the original person that made the strategy, right? This didn't come from IML. This didn't come from MLM. This didn't come from Mamba FX. This didn't come from QBanks. This didn't come from uh, Daniel Savage FX here down in Miami. It didn't come from anybody except myself. So you already know I'm that GOAT. So uh, continue on with our explanation. So yesterday, I did leave you off with a perfect analysis right here. We did see the perfect divergence right here. I even, I even highlighted the area of interest, which is all the way up at 78. The next mountain that followed was a lower high. Let's go ahead and see what the fuck I was thinking about when I did all of this, all right? Because our thought process is very important for you to understand the mindset, all right? What was Jacob thinking while he threw down this analysis, okay? Because y'all might be thinking some shit, but it won't correlate with what I'm thinking because someone earlier on, I think uh, yesterday or two days ago told me, well, I talked to this other trader and he told me that divergence doesn't really work like that. So like I wasn't able to take that trade because I doubted myself. All right, bro. For you, if you're on this live stream, you know who the hell you are. Guys, do not take any advice from anyone else doing divergence that it's not me. Okay. You can't, they're not going to understand my mindset of how I specifically trade divergence with some other bozo. All right. He's not going to know if, if you YouTube divergence on YouTube and shit like that and you YouTube and shit like that. It's not, gonna, it's not going to be my one step, one step, two step, three step, four. I guarantee you, I bet, you know what I mean? My capital on it, whatever you want. You know, I wanted to make it funny, but then I was like, whoa, that might be a little bit too soon. It's too early for that type of joke. So, you know what I mean? I bet on it. There's no one else doing this. So don't grab advice from any other trader on my strategy because they're going to probably think, oh, what the fuck? I don't really understand this. Or they're going to be like, no, why are you doing that? Just do support resistance. And everyone else trading divergence is different from myself. Okay. It's not really going to be the exact same verbatim explanation on why we do this. Why we wait for this candle? Why would we put it on top of the wick? Why do we wait for the breakout? Why do we put an advanced entry at the toppest divergence candle as an advanced entry on the 50% using the fib? No one's going to know that shit. All right. I promise you, if you're not part of my premium, if you haven't been following me since I started streaming this on, um, on March and for all of you guys that were streaming since March on March, the month of March, I back tested NAS 100 in March. And I know the videos and the live streams are not here because they're not kept through trading you for more than 30 days, but we back tested NAS 100 on March. All right. On the one minute time frame from January. All right. And I know this might be like, oh, what the, what did he see just say? So in March, I started live streaming on trading you for the very first time ever in my life. I wanted to show everyone the strategy and how to do it verbatimly 
just like I'm doing right now, but I was back testing instead of live trading. We, I back tested in March. I went all the way back to January number one, the first day of January 2021. And I literally started to back test NAS 100 on the one minute time frame from seven in the morning to 12 p.m. I would do on one live stream, I would back test five days. So five days. January 1, January 2, 3, 4, and 5 from 7 to 12. And then a, another, you know what I mean? Then the next section from 7 to 12. And I would literally flip the candles all the way to the back. I would show you the divergence. It was insane. For everyone that got that content, I'm very happy. For all of you right now, I'm definitely not going to be doing that ever again because that shit was stressful and it took me forever. But it only gave me, to me, even more validation that this strategy is goaded as fuck. So here, what was our viewpoint now? Our point of interest was right here. If you look at the crosshairs from up and down, up and down, yes, right? You look from the daily price action, which was right here, throw this into a line piece, and all the way down here on the RSI, that's your point of interest marked up by an ellipse. Now, from here all the way to this mountain, Look how on the RSI it dropped, okay, but on the actual chart it went higher, all right? And that's perfect divergence for y'all, all right? At home viewing for the very first time, that's divergence. When the daily price action is going up, but on the RSI it's going down. For my retail traders that have never really, you know what I mean, traded this before, and you're like, dude, what the fuck is he talking about, all right? So basically what you'd like to see is that here on the RSI, usually when it's super overbought, like at this level, a lot of retail traders might press sell because they might think, holy shit, this is super overbought. Look at where it's at. It might just start to drop down on the RSI and then I'll be able to make a lot of money. What happens, unfortunately, to all you retail traders that don't really understand this, it'll continue to go up higher and then you might take out your entry because you might be scared as fuck that you will lose your account because you don't know where you put your stop loss. And as well, it continues to go up higher. And you're like, why is it going up higher if on the RSI it already showed me that it's super overbought? I mean, it's the indicator trying to guide me, telling me when it's overbought to sell and it's failing me. So how the fuck do I use this RSI? Boom! That's where I came in and was like, how do I use this RSI? Join in divergence, join in smart money concept, join in Wyckoff strategy, and then meld it all together in my cauldron pot of witchcraft, and then bring out a spell book of divergence with a perfect, okay, instruction on step one through four and how to do this shit, all right? So we started with step one. Step one is to find divergence. That's the very first step, all right? Between the RSI and daily price action, that's step one. Step two, draw a trend line. Where are we going to draw a trend line? From the last level of support. And if you don't have this indicator, this support resistance indicator that I have, support resistance levels with breaks, you can get it at the premium mentorship. It is part of the premium. I give it to you guys for free on the premium mentorship. The premium is $60. I paid a pretty good amount for the indicator off a, uh, off a coder, off a, off a pine editor coding professional from fiber from india you know what i mean he was super cool and he also tried to rob me so you felt me i took this indicator and i still paid him some money but i didn't pay him everything he wanted he wanted a thousand dollars i paid him 200 i took this indicator i actually wanted him to create an rsi divergence indicator for me but he was trying to charge me an extra $800 for that. And I was like, fuck you. I'm going to go and find one myself. So here under the indicators, right, you can just search it up. RSI Divergence Indicator Strategy by Mohani. That's the one I'm using now. It's not going to look exactly the way that it looks for me because obviously as you get to know me, I'm very fucking OCD and I like to change everything that I have. This is modded. My support and resistance levels is modded. My 200 EMA, I was using at 55 to begin with, now it's 200. Also the strategy, I modded it to perfection. So yes, I'm going to be tweaking and changing and altering a bunch of shit. Now here, 
I mean, you can still use it as divergence because it'll still kind of show you bear and bull. But what you will want to look for is the bear when it's up here, not bull or no bullish bearish calls when it's at the 50. You want to get the calls when it's up here, when it's overbought and oversold, such as right here or such as right here. This call is poopy caca. This call over here, poopy caca. This one good. This one good. This one good. This one good. Now, it's not going to be that easy because you can't just grab an indicator and think, oh, that's it. I totally got it all the way. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need you, Jacob, because you're going to crash and burn, and then you're going to think that divergent strategy fucking sucks, but it actually doesn't. It's actually goaded, but you need to know how to work it. So step one, find divergence, all right? Very perfect. From here, we found it, point of interest all the way through. It, can, it continued to go higher. This green candle was our last like was our last candle that pushed the highest all right consecutively the candles after this was this green candle that did not push higher these green candles that did not push higher and then it started to drop now from my last point of support we draw a trend line so it had to be something like this okay and we were waiting for that break to the downside for us to sell it ended up happening around 1056 and went back up from 1056 but it did not hit no 80 pip stop loss, which is our SL, 80 pips, all right? It did go up a total of around 60, right? You were 20 shy, and then it started to shoot down into hell, okay? So from here, which would have been our first breakout candle, it would have been over 400 pips to the downside. That was yesterday. I was a bit impatient. I should have continued to wait to see the sell and then been very happy face but I was a little bit impatient. I set a sell limit for myself here because everything I say I do, obviously we have an alarm right here, which you can see it is legit. When did we start that alarm? I'm not sure. Let's see if this uh, trading view kind of tells us. September 20th at 849. You see where it says created right there on the screen? Created September 849, 50 seconds, September 20th. So on September 20th, at 8.49, that's where I left my alert. Now at 8.49, when was this? We were literally streaming for another two hours, I think. 8.49, right here. Here, at 8.49. That's where I created this alarm. And, I, and then I also did the 30, 50 pips and I said, if it breaks through this, I even set an alarm. If it breaks through this, that's gonna be our get go. Now, yes. I would have wanted it to catch it from here, but unfortunately I did it. I still caught my 50 pips and was really happy. Okay, it was actually like 50 on the dot, I'm pretty sure. Or actually it was 57. It marked up 50 for me on my MetaTrader 4 because I traded through KOT 4X and that's what it gave me. So that was great. Right now we are not seeing divergence, so we're just seeing it bop around now in the 50%. Let's see if it wants to pulse back to the upside to then show divergence to then sell. But for now, on this type of little signal, right, it already kind of happened. Now, it did sell through that. Then after it sold through that, if you guys were still trading, still looking for divergence, you'd have seen that from 1437, which is around 2.37 p.m. Eastern time, all the way to 3.15, 3.16 Eastern time, it showed divergence. Look at this. Lowest point of interest. Higher lows, higher lows, higher low, but point of interest right here, lower low, lower low, lower low. So how would I have charted this up? Just for you guys to get a quick example, all right? Ellipse right here, ellipse right here. Let's draw a white trend line just to visually guide ourselves. It's not an actual trend line. I'm not here drawing a trend line right now. I'm doing a visual guidance, a visual representation of where divergence started and where it ended. And then, just like this visual representation right here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw another visual representation from this point to this point, all right? So it's the same shit. I don't even have to draw it, but I'm gonna draw it manually for all my people that need to understand this to the T. Now, what do you do? Let's send this backwards. So let's see where our actual, our last point of resistance was. It was actually up here, okay? So when you start sending this through, our first red candle was here. You'd have grabbed it from the last point of resistance, 
you would have drawn the can the the trend line the actual trend line greens followed by red trend line it would have broken out you would have had a buy limit very tight with this space and not only that but yesterday we had drawn this blue box telling you guys specifically fuck i can't go backwards anymore and jojo was seems to be the only one there can't really go back so whatever but on the live stream i did say we did pump it to the one hour we looked to the left to get right we saw a bunch of support here we said well it is towering to the downside from sunday open all the way down to monday we see it recovering in this blue box okay and pushing back up to the upside now let's look what happened on the one minute show divergence below the box all right which is still a great um kind of signal for you to think well he did say that i was going to grab support in this area let me see if there's divergence on the one minute to validate that and then take the buy okay so if you didn't take the sell yesterday here on the sell limit caught those 30 50 pits which are piece of cake no drawback thank god all right sometimes we do have drawback all the way up to like 60 pips of drawback but it just fell literally 200 plus pips now it showed divergence by limit right here let me change this to a green and three pixels so that we're all able to see this bang right look at this pump up back up 276 pips to the upside guys i can't stress myself out you know what i mean over this you guys are not really you know what i mean like doing this and i'm sorry it is what it is. Awesome. So, Michael618, what's up, my brother? Welcome back to the live stream. Very happy to see you here. Also, very happy to have added your new phone onto our premium. Your thoughts on using Strategy Tester to gauge which index pair is getting the best results from your strategy each morning and following that more closely. All right. So, yes, Strategy Tester will tell you the amount of percentage of profitability that our strategy will be busting. Now, this is the thing, Michael, I do want to go ahead and tell you so that you're able to follow through to perfection and not get yourself confused, okay? The strategy tester, okay, like this, the strategy tester is not where it says bear wicks or bull wicks, okay? Bull wicks and bear wicks bull wicks and bear wicks come from support and resistance levels with breaks okay that's those signals now the other signals that you could put set an alarm on is this these arrows so for these arrows i'm not sure how i did it last time but i think i like right clicked on it yes that's what i did so last time what i did was i right click on the blue arrows because the blue arrows and these purple arrows are part of the rsi divergence indicator all right so the rsi divergence indicator is what's popping up under strategy tester all right so strategy tester for the one minute is 65 percent profitability which means that it's not always going to be profitable but when it tells you to buy, you know, 65% of the time, it will go ahead and buy. Now here, you know, you would have been in some pretty nasty drawback and then you would have been profitable. But here, you'd have been in some serious drawback, but then in the end profitable. Here, you would have been profitable right off the bat in continuation. Again, all the blue arrows here, you would have been profitable for just a smidge came down for almost three hours of 200 pips and then went up a little smidge of 50 pips so it wouldn't have been that you know what i mean like that crazy and stuff like that which is why i don't just use the rsi divergence indicator you know what i mean just for me to get, be getting signals i use it when i'm jarring up the divergence strategy let's say like over here it shows divergence and then right here it shows me the little blue arrow for a fact that's solid that is going to go to the upside okay let me see where i can give you another example like right here perfectly this is the perfect example right here that i can show you when it shows divergence brother when it shows divergence michael and it shoots you the blue arrow after I mean, for me, I would drop a little bit of a higher lot size 
Because it's confirming on confirming on confirming. Why? Because we're doing our four steps. Nothing's really changing too much. Right here, we saw divergence from this point of interest all the way through. Let's go ahead and draw the ellipse on our point of interest, which is right here at 1917. All right, 1917, this red candle is our point of interest that on the R side said it's oversold by this bitch, right? But it wasn't actually oversold. From the last level of resistance up here, it would have had to have climbed on this red candle, right? Because this is the last red candle that showed divergence, that sold the lowest. As we can see, let's go ahead and get LCD with it all the way down over here at this level. Green, greens, greens, followed by red trend line. Green, blue arrow, blue arrow broke through confirmation. So I like to use the blue arrow as a level of confirmation rather than just taking my trades off of it. If you go ahead and the strategy tester, right, you open it. And you look at the certain other time frames, it's gonna change from 65 to 67 on the one hour, change from 65 to now 70 on the four hour, change from 65 to 75, and then on the day on the 12 hour, 85%. Which means what? What really specifically is that? It means that when it tells you the blue arrow on the 12 hour time frame, like here there's more likely of a chance that as soon as it pops up that, that blue arrow of love, this shit is going to be busting. What happened here? This is gonna be busting to the upside, all right? Right here, bust up a little bit and then kind of dump down. Right here, you would have been in some drawback before that continuation of like 15,000 points. Right here, it would have been great. But as you continue to climb the, the, the time frame, right, to the higher time frame. It's going to be shooting less and less of these blue arrows. So my suggestion to you is if you're trading on your own independently, grab divergence first, abide by step one, two, three, and four, and use the blue arrow as confirmation to have that trade in. Okay. Hopefully you were able to understand that completely. If you weren't, please go ahead and give me a question or what you didn't understand. And I'll go ahead and give you that answer for you. Nice call this AM Jack. When index was looking to go up, you nailed the short. Thank you so much, my brother. You already know we're trying our hardest to really be as profitable as possible and to be calling out the best trades on this channel so that our reputation continues to go up higher and as well, the credibility continues to go up higher. And for you guys to start moving from support and resistance all the way now to divergence using it with my strategy. Please guys, for all of you guys viewing this for the very first time, do not mix other traders with my strategy. All right, it's not going to work out, okay? If you're using my strategy, use my strategy. If you're using whoever the fuck, you know, Pepe, Jose, you know, um, let's say like, uh, what other names can we think about? Uh, Damien, uh, you know, Chantel, Chad, whatever other fucking trader, right? Daniel Savage, Mamba FX, Q Banks, Air, you know, anything from MLM or IML, which is complete fucking garbage. Do not mix that with my strategy because you will be unsuccessful. All right. My strategy is my strategy. It only works using it through our laws. Okay. So right here, we see it pumping back to the downside. I guess it pumped back another 162 pips. Unfortunately enough though, it did not show divergence here in this area for me to have sold this to the bottom. We did see it climbing back to the upside and it did hit those 50, 30, 50, 80 pips. All right, let's see if she climbs back down, shows divergence and wants to pump up again. Pump up the jam, pump it up a little more. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's see, NAS 100 also, I mean, SPX 500, excuse me, did pump up those 80 pips, the 50 pips, and the 30 pips, and now has dropped to this level again. Let's see what's going on. It might just pump back up to the upside. I'm not really quite too sure what might happen today. It might just be a kind of a ping pong day. And the reason why I say it might just be a ping pong day is because there's a lot of low impact folders. So I don't really see too much crazy as volatility happening, which means that the trading will be a little bit more safe. Okay, 
Now it did show divergence and did go up, then back down. All right, so it did kind of pump fake because it went up and then died back down, as you can see from here and here. So let's see. Hold on, guys. I'm using my phone for just a smidge. Hold on, guys. I'm still here. I haven't really left. Still here, guys. Okie dokie. Okay, okay. We also said to sell USDJPY yesterday. Hopefully, you guys did get into that sell because that sell was very profitable as well. All right, so back into it, back into the groove. Back into the groove. Let's see what's happening right here. We're seeing a new point of interest right here. It is showing divergence. Let's be patient to see whether or not this will pump to the upside or not. Grab it from the last point of resistance because you already know that's what we do. Do not eat through any of the candles. The wicks are fine. The candles are not. And let's wait to see if it breaks back to the upside and then buys back up. All right. So far, yes, we have been in a bearish market. So bear calls have been more profitable than bullish calls. But... At the end of the day, I do see this recovering anyways. I mean, it's recovered every single time that this motherfucker has pushed below the trend line. So why wouldn't it happen this time? If it doesn't recover, then everyone is going to be selling this shit. Stocks are going to be falling. The whole market will be selling, basically. If a lot more investors start to get a whiff of this market crashing down, then we'll see a lot of shit crashing down. Okay, so let's see what's the dealio with that. What's the haps with that, okay? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, guys. Okay, so... Right now, that's what we're seeing. I'm not really gonna be on live for that long because again, it is my wife's birthday and I do need to go and get, you know, a cake, some balloons, and then this, and then that, and go over there, and then go pick her up at work. And then I also have to do something else. So, you know what I mean? It is a little bit of a busy day for me in particularly, but I did just wanna go ahead and set you up with at least uh, perhaps some trade availabilities. All right, right here, we are seeing a continuation actually in divergence, which is quite interesting for NAS 100. Um, although now we wouldn't be able to grab it from here. We'd have to draw a trend line from this set location and draw it exactly like this. Now we do see the crossover, but let's wait a little bit. Let's be patient. Okay, NAS 100 is showing the complete divergence call from here all the way to here. Greens followed by red trend line too tight from the last level of resistance. Greens followed by red trend line just right, not eating through any candles, not any, not uh, not even eating through any wicks. It's literally right on the ball. 
So let's see, NAS 100 might be starting to pump back to the upside. Let's look at the 10 minute, let's look at the one hour. All right, so let's see. I mean, I would see it kind of falling some more, to be honest with you, um, especially because if this is doing the Wyckoff schematic right now in the one hour, it would go down, up, down, up, down, and then push all the way to the sky. Um, but let's see. SPX 500, who are you? All right, US 30. Let's see, what are you doing, my friend? US 30 did push a little bit lower, actually, indeed, with this candle. So it did push the divergence all the way through. Now to this point over here. And from the last level of resistance to draw a trend line to update it, it's actually literally like right there. You see how at this area, it's wick, wick, tip of the candle, wick, red candle, red, green, followed by red, trend line too tight, green, followed by red, trend line just right. Let's wait to see if it breaks to the upside and gives us that opportunity for the 30, 50 pips to the upside. If it continues to sell and just continue to push down and down and down, then I mean, you know what I mean? I guess it won't give us that entry, right? But so far, that's what we're waiting for. Let's go ahead and look at the daily forecast for everything else before I leave. I'm sorry, guys, as this was such a fast as live stream, but we did get on at the beginning of the live stream and we did say, hey, this shit is going to be awesome. Hi, Jacob. Hope you can create graph for copper. It shows divergence on one hour chart before it starts falling. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll definitely do it before I leave the live stream. Definitely do it before I leave the live stream. I did want to ask what is the ticker name for copper and what broker are you using? Because personal, personally, uh, I only have gold and silver. All right, so please let me know. Um, what's the ticker name for copper? I mean, I'm always going to look it up, but I did also want to know what broker you're using just to give you the exact analysis of what that might be like and also to give you accuracy. Okay, so I will be doing that as well. Um, Blah, 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 blah. I don't know if you're still here, GST, GSTA Mateo, but if you are, I'm still going to do your analysis. If you aren't, then I'll possibly do your analysis after I do one bad eye because you have left. And also, he is also online. So it only makes sense for me to do him first and then you second. My you guys and your names seriously like guys cannot pick any harder names to write out G S T A M A T I O U how did I get that wrong at G S T G S T A M A T I O U that guy's account does not come out as G S T dude am I wrong bro? What the fuck? G S T G S T A M A T I O U. I don't know why the fuck Trading View just hasn't registered your account yet, but Alright, so try the divergence indicator. It's working very well. Well, um, yes, divergence indicator is great. Uh, I use a very specific indicator, so I don't know who exactly you're talking about or talking to, uh, I'd rather say divergent indicator. So if you're using just this shit right here, that is not what I use, but yeah, I mean, shit, it looks pretty good, right? I mean, you know? You can use whatever you want. You know what I mean? I have it completely modified. I use Mohani's, which is a little bit different from just divergence indicator. But yeah, I mean, if this works for you and you're willing, you know what I mean, to use this platform and to be, you know what I mean, just grabbing your entries from here, then that is amazing as well. I do not hate. 
Look at mine. Look at that one. It's literally almost the very same motherfucking thing to the dot. So that's looking great. You know what I mean? If you use this one, I highly recommend it. I'm not here to hide anything. I'm not here to make you guys fail. I'm not here to sell you anything forcefully for you guys to be able to profit. I'm happy with everyone and anyone understanding this strategy and also following along with the streams and also following the community so that we can all become a bigger culture and continue to climb in the words of divergence which to me is like the holy motherfucking ghost coming down from the skies and being like yo this is gonna change your life and it really does all right i did have a hater and one of the live streams be like it's not gonna change your life stop the cap but it is absolutely gonna change your life because Understanding a strategy and having it consistently play out time and time again for you to grab more and more confidence. Confidence equals better trading, which equals more money, which equals change of lifestyle. If you have a fucked up strategy that you learned off whatever other trader that you're paying $150, $100, $70, whatever it might be, $300, IML, MLM, all these other motherfuckers that are, you know, super wealthy and like, give you 10% of their time and 10% of the explanation to their strategy, or they just make you watch a bunch of videos and they never explain the strategy to you, even on the live stream like this one, then you know what I mean? You might have a little bit of inconsistency with the strategy or just being like, should I execute the trade here or not? And then that creates doubt and doubt creates really bad energetic vibes for you to be trading in the market okay you need to have a positive mindset and a negative mindset is you having doubts because if you were positive you wouldn't have doubts you would be confident and be happy and be trading and be changing your life if not then you have doubts and you're negative um negative energetically trading in this market and then you're going to be like should i take off oh my god i'm 40 pips and you know i'm 40 pips and drawback i should Oh, this is probably not going to go through. You take it out and then it ends up going your right way. And then you continue to have troubles in the market. So with all that being explained, copper for FXCM. Let's go ahead and do that copper FXCM one by eye. I did do that Japan 225 analysis for you. And that shit was fire. So let's go ahead and do this one. So uh, let's just do copper right the fuck now. And then I'll go ahead and go through everything else. He said copper on FXCM, copa, copa futures. All right, let's look at it under, I guess just futures, copper futures, copper FXCM, YU stock, NYSE, global prime. Am I writing copper right? Of course I am, right? Can't be this. Is it because it's capped? I mean, it has to be capped, so. Copper, MCX, Comics, not really quite sure what, what I'm doing wrong. Symbol is FX, Copper. Okay, cool. It was offering. Okay, so it's not really working for me, but I can just write this and then this, right? FX, see? I don't know why I can't get it, bro. But let's see if this is also the, you know, the kind of, oh, no, it's not. It's not the assumption. All right, so when I look at gold, then, what the fuck? Oh, but that's possibly because I look at it under XAU USD. You see? So that would be COP USD, COP USD, Colombian peso. Ooh, I didn't even know they had that. Shit, I'm Colombian myself from Colombia. Well, I was born here in America, but you know my parents are Colombian, so that is something cool. I might want to look at that. But yeah, copper, buddy, not really coming out. So uh, where's that? Where's that at? FX copper. Uh, FXEM copper. I mean, I could just write copper, but it just comes out as you know, it just comes out as this. So. I mean, even if I did silver, which is uh, XAG USD, it comes out like this. So, yeah. But what if I write? Um, 
Nah, man. I don't know how to get this. Please teach me. One bad eye. How do I do it? Or how the fuck? What am I doing wrong, bro? Is it this? Is it this? I'm not sure if this is the right chart, but you did say that on the one hour uh, diversion. So is it this, brother? Just try the first result on copper. Wow, when did TV add streams? Oh, when did TradingView add streams? Bro, TradingView added streams, like, I think it was in 2020. It was like 2020 around like, I would want to say like June, July, August of 2020, TradingView uh, had live streams on beta and then I signed up and sent them emails and then they were like, all right, we'll approve you. You know, you have a good following, whatever. So you do have to, uh, I mean, at some point you had to get approved. I don't think you have to get approved now. Although streams are still in the beta version. So there's still a lot more that they can do with it. But yeah, I think all you have to do is send a message or something. And then you're able to kind of talk to a moderator and then they'll kind of give you permission to stream because not everyone can stream, but I'm not sure if they changed that. But yeah, it was around last year of July, August, 2020, when uh, TradingView went ahead and added live streams, which are so fucking awesome. I thought it was amazing and it's still amazing to this day. Just try the first result on copper. All right, one bad eye. Is this what you see for your uh, chart, my friend? Or is it this? Cause I'm just trying to get it right. You know what I mean? Damn, Colombian peso looking against the dollar. This shit looks trash. But divergence is still goaded on this. Jesus. I really do love this job, guys. I love this job so much. It's so much fun. Trading is so much fun to me. I guess that's why I like, I mean, I'm pretty good at it. It's just because I really like it. The first one, I think. All right, cool. So just going to do the first one. XCU USD. Let's go ahead and add this under our metal. So now we have gold, silver, and copper. All right, now let me look at how these look like. Do they look the same? Doesn't really look that different, right? There's an up mountain right here, down, up, down, up. So up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's different. All right, so this one's different. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Hopefully it will go up. Yeah, up, down, up, down, up, down. Hopefully it will go up. Now, right now for copper, okay? These are quick, speedy, speedy, right? Speedy analysis. Number one, I'm going to tell you something very quick. Number one, for gold, I called this out on the one hour. I said, bing, bing, red, this is your buy. This is a live call. What happened? Taking off to the upside. Let's go goaded. Divergent strategy never failing. If you guys missed out on that, please go backwards or go into my profile. Then go. I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. Let's go. That is a song. I totally follow you on that. Limit drive. Um, this shit is is awesome, right? It is it is amazing. I'm very happy to be trading and as well to find this as my occupation. Uh, 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 uh. So here on gold, if you did not catch this on the street, please check back under my streams. Again, you'd go to, I guess, my profile right here. Right? Do, 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 do. Then go to streams. And you know what I mean? Now I added that picture. Right? It looks good, right? It looks good. All right, but I don't remember where exactly it was, and these streams are kind of big. So, like, I don't want to take too much of your time because I do want to do the analysis on copper, and I do need to get going already. So, you know what I mean? It's somewhere in here that we talked about gold on the one hour, and I'd like to pinpoint it Sorry, because that uh, shit was fire. And I, I caught it literally, like, at the beginning of it. 
I know I didn't drop a signal on my premium chat. I am fucking lacking on that sense. I should be literally dropping every single thing I see. Um, let me see. I, like, I usually do crypto, then metals. So hopefully, I can just get it very quickly. All right. Let, let's just see. All right. Let me wind it back one. Let me go back one, one step. Give me a second, guys. Give me one sec. Well, actually, give me two minutes, all right? Let's not be unrealistic and be like, give me one second. But I actually need, like, two minutes. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Gold. Gold, one hour. One hour, one hour. Looks like it started around September. Yeah, like yesterday. All right, so it was yesterday. All right, so we're not tripping. It was yesterday, but this is actually the 16th. Yesterday was this one. Okay, cool. So it might actually be this one. Or this. It's looking bubbles. Uh, and then it's zero. Okay. GU, all right. So now that I have US3. US3. Whoa, whoa, Apple stock. Zero. Oh, fuck did I get to Apple stock? Um, I usually do this like US oil was fire selling it right there. Yeah, also yeah, gave yeah. that out on the live streams this month. US three. Where the fuck is gold? So news. Yeah, we are anticipating right. US three again. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Gold analysis. Bitcoin. Wow. Bitcoin. You got any cheeses? I guess I didn't do it. Faster. 50% down. 25% down. I do see Doge going back to the upside. I do, I do have some colleagues saying that it will go back to 5, 10 cents. There we go. Gold. Bitches, let's go. On the live streams, guys, you can't, you can't get any better than that. Wait, let me mute myself. I'm talking about shit. This is live yesterday, guys. Right here. Live. You know what I mean? Have like a mini events entry. Everything's recorded. There's no going back and be like, oh shit, I kind of fucked up yesterday. Uh, they're not gonna notice. Everything's there. All the proof, all the validation, everything of everything, all the back, everything's there. Like all you gotta do is just go back in the live stream and be like, is he talking shit? Let me watch his last live stream. Oh fuck, he did say that. Oh shit, it did go his way. Oh damn, well maybe this strategy is kind of fucking there great. Two minutes until it's smaller time. Okay? And everybody showed too much diversion, so one hour is the big kahuna that showed the divergence. Everything else. Not really. Except for me, it's too show. All right, so with all those funky dance moves and everything else, we were expecting gold to go to the upside. Okay? All right, gang. Let's go back into the charts. All right, so into the charts, going back into the golds. Where are you going? Where are you, baby girl? Right there, that's where you are. Bang, 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 bang. One day after, a bang. All right, did not touch advanced entry, which is a little bit of a sad face, but from 1760 did, all right, and we did just view, you know what I mean? You guys do have a mental image of what the fuck we were just, uh, that Portuguese mustache was fire. Hell yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, today I kind of woke up a little bit early, so I wasn't able to do it, right? It does take a little bit of like 10, 15, 20 minutes to actually get it super perfect. But thank you so much, Falco. I really do appreciate that. We're getting that mustache game back, all right? Going back into uh, the past and bringing it into the future. A lot of people just have their, you know, the kind of like side scruff right here, right here, you know what I mean? And just like that link. Man, that's overplayed. Let's bring the stash back and let's rock it to the end of time. So going back with the analysis, everyone saw how we called it at this green 
green impulse, we were seeing divergence on gold. Let's see how that looks like on the RSI divergence, all right? Look at that, point of interest at nine. Let's go ahead and mark this up just for educational purposes and for us to have a visual representation of what had happened at that time point. Now from nine all the way through to 23, we can see how that raised from nine all the way to 23, which was the last red candle. Greens followed by red, trend line from the last level of resistance, all right? Yes or yes? Yes. Let's bring up our steps. Very easy. So with our steps, it says find divergence, then draw a trend line, then wait for the breakout, then market execution. I know it's like three fucking steps followed by a final one, which is the advanced entry. And it's that easy. And I can't believe that it's that easy. But at the same time, I made this shit to be easy because I needed even my siblings to be able to understand this strategy and not be like, and not be like, oh shit, you feel me? Like, this shit is complicated. So I literally thought of everything while creating the strategy. I was like, it needs to be simple. It needs to be understandable. It needs to be like young people friendly, older generation friendly, every generation X, Z, fucking millennials. Everyone in this bitch needs to understand what the hell I'm saying because that's the only way that I'll be able to reach the most amount of people and also be able to change the lives of a lot of people. I feel like this is my purpose right now is to be sharing this information with y'all, which is why I'm doing the most to try and be able to be live streaming you guys and be giving you the most amount of information. All right. This is, you know, if you're good at something and you were given that gift, you need to show it to the other community. Okay. It can't always be all for yourself. Also, making all this amount of money by myself is a little bit boring when I could be making people a lot more money in a unison and then everyone could be winning and then I'll be happy because I'm providing something for our community and I'm not just being a greedy fucking stooge over here making money and then charging y'all $500 for a strategy because that's pretty fucking shitty. So my strategy and my premium is $60. It's very affordable. It's very manageable. As the numbers keep up going higher, it might just go up to like 100 a month, 150 a month. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I also created the strategy over a long period of time. So it's not like I could give everything for free because you know what I mean? Like that's just ridiculous, right? But with all that being said, we saw divergence right here from the point of interest. And then it started to go a little bit lower, green followed by red, draw a trend line. We drew the trend line. We waited for the breakout, which meant what, guys? It meant the candle that broke out of this trend line to the upside, all right? Not saying that, you know, like that these candles were the ones that broke out. It didn't. These candles pierced through the trend line, but they didn't actually have a breakout. This one broke out. We put the alarm. It touched our entry. It touched our entry. It touched our entry. Barely any drawback. Thank the Lord. You know what I mean? It doesn't always happen that way that we don't have that much drawback. Sometimes it's like perfect. Sometimes we have a little bit of drawback. Sometimes we might even hit a stop loss. But thank God this month of September, we have been undefeated. No stop losses have hit on every single call that we've traded. So uprise, right? Let's look at silver. Silver, I was awaiting the same thing. Why? Because monkey see, monkey do. Do you see how these are on the RSI? Take a peep on the RSI, guys. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle it from one to the other. This is um, silver. This is gold. All right, so gold, silver, copper. So we see a similar structure between gold and silver, and then copper is a little bit different, you know, a little bit different. But overall, we are seeing divergence on the one hour all at the bottom of the RSI. Now, between gold and silver, Look at that. It broke out actually uh, yesterday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So yesterday's U.S. session, then Asian session kicked in, then London session kicked in, pushes to the upside. Now today, pushing it back down. How would you grab these entries for silver going back to the upside? This would be your entry over here. This would be your entry over here. 50% uh, of the lowest trading candle, which is this one right here. So that's what it would look like, literally. And 
that's about it. That's as easy as it gets. So copper, now that it's doing all this, copper is looking a bit different though, because gold is going upright, silver is kind of wobbly, but copper is just literally dying. So not really sure why from here, point of interest all the way down has just been kind of like free falling, right? But when you tune it into a higher time frame, this is a good level of support right here in this block piece from, from here all the way up to this line, right? Weep. So there's a good amount of support. Let's see if it drops to this level and then starts to recover. But there's a lot of good support levels right here. Let's go into the one hour. And now let's go ahead and draw out the divergent strategy. Our point of interest is where, guys? This tip, not this two points, this tip right here. This tip that if you look all the way to your left or right, wherever you have to tilt your face to, to be able to look to the numbers of the RSI, these numbers are 22.341. Everyone agree? 22.341 all the way to the right-hand side of your monitor. You know what I mean? It might be mirrored because you're looking at me, so I might be looking left or some shit like that, but it's 22.341. That is the lowest mountain. Now let's go ahead and let's zoom it in so that everyone's like, okay, I totally understand. Jacob, thank you so much for being so thorough. Right here, 22.282.341, whatever the fuck it might be, this mountain. Okay, so from that mountain, that piece right there, all the way through to the latest information, which is literally now from nine in the morning, so this red candle all the way straight through to this red candle, that's what we're seeing now. From here, you're gonna draw a trend line. We're gonna wait. Okay, so this is not a buy. We have to wait for greens, followed by red, and then a breakout like this for it to happen. Then our buy limit would be here, and our advanced buy limit would be at the 50% of this candle. So it literally looks something like this. All you need to do is then wait for it to come back down, touch, and then continue to go up to the upside. Why would it go to the upside? Because, guys, we're on the bottom of the RSI. Once we're at the bottom, we need to go back to the top. Once we're at the top, we go to the bottom. Bottom, go to the top. From the top, we go to the bottom. Over and over and over again, indefinitely, for time and time for come, forever. Okay? Thanks for teaching us your strategy, Jack S2. Absolutely, my friend. I got you, Falco. Alias Falco Punch from uh, Super Smash Bros. Which I do love that game. And Falco was my favorite character, Falco the Fox. Any word on gold? So gold, I just went over it. It's buying the 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 buy entry already happened yesterday. You feel me? So yeah, basically gold already took off. I gave that signal yesterday. So if you weren't part of the live stream yesterday, please give me a follow on my website. That's Jacob Nets dot com for you to enter on the telegram and for you to be notified when i'm going on the live streams for you to be able to uh just know you know what i mean what the fuck's going on when it's going on and everything else in between gold i already gave those entry sorry i just joined that's totally fine do not be sorry my friend like don't be sorry at all okay there's nothing to be sorry about you didn't know before if you're on this live stream right now, that's amazing. If you just joined, this is what's going on with gold right now. One bad eye, I'm gonna continue with you. I haven't forgotten you, my brother. I know I just gave like a little bit of analysis, but it still hasn't been as thorough. So gold right now, if for whatever reason it was come to come back to 1760, that would be your buy limit. But yesterday, right, we gave that entry of 1760 and now we find ourselves at 1777. So pretty good, pretty good, you know what I mean? 170 pips to the upside since yesterday's call out on gold, okay? Now, I don't really like to trade gold all the time because gold can be a little sneaky, sneaky, but it did go ahead and abide. Silver does look like a great opportunity as well to continue to the upside, and copper still needs a little bit more time because it does need to show us the greens, followed by red for us to be able to draw a perfect trend line for it to have a breakout. And once it has a breakout again, buy limit, advance buy limit, and just wait it out. And hopefully in good faith, it won't go back to the upside because on the daily, let's look at these pairs. Woo! On the daily, look at all of the support right here, right? Support over here. So if it does dip down even lower, 
I hopefully will grab some support in this area and then push back to the upside and hopefully make higher highs, okay? So that's what I'd be waiting for copper. For silver, it's at those support areas, which we would want to see copper sell a little bit more and then find those support areas just as silver has. That's why I have this blue blob highlighted because this blue blob is for you to visually to visually have to have a visual representation of where our past support levels are and where it might grab support again and start to buy to the upside. Now, if silver starts to take off to the upside, you know, again, we have those one hour signals right here in the bottom, which is pretty fire. But if it continues to just pop off, then you have a buy stop, a, a buy stop and a buy stop, not buy limits, because what you would want is for price to follow this right here to go back up, down, go through this buy stop, go down, go up, go down, go through these two buy stops and then continue up to the high to take liquidity at this um, at this level, okay? If you don't know what liquidity is, it basically means that a lot of sellers have sold in this market over here, pushing market to the downside, okay? They're in profit, so banks would wanna push this back to the upside to stop out all these people that are in huge profits thinking that this shit's gonna continue to the downside and then it'll have a reversal and stomp them out and then have another reversal and reversal and reversal and reversal. So liquidity is up here right now. Liquidity was down here because again, from here it bought up from these three. It was up here for a while. So now there's liquidity down here. So market pushed down, took this liquidity. Now it's gonna push sideways to get more buyers and sellers in the market and then push back up to the upside to go back into the previous level of liquidity which is at these resistance levels, all right? Which is why my squiggly looks like it's going up and down because it's going to consolidate and then start pushing to the upside with time, okay? So that's what that's going to happen. Now, with gold, okay, I see the same shit happening. It's going up. It was, it was at those previous levels of support over here, over here, all right, with this wick, which happens in August. Then it came back up and down back at these levels of support. Okay, so if I were to draw this out, these block pieces, they would look exactly like this. And where does it find itself now, team? It finds itself still at those levels of support, trying to find its push back to the upside to grab liquidity at the levels of resistance, team. So that's what we see happening. That's why if I delete this text, the squiggly, right, I was anticipating for it to fall all the way up to over here and it did indeed fall all you know it fell kind of rather quickly but hopefully in good faith it'll go back up then back down and push down on these levels again and then literally start pushing to the upside to make those higher highs so it's almost the same analysis that we have on on copper on silver and on gold that's what we have it's kind of like the crypto scene where we see you know Bitcoin, which in this case would be gold, fall, then all the other altcoins, which in this case was, would, which would be silver and copper, also fall. So, you know, monkey see, monkey do in those regards. Uh, Sora 86, Sora Live 86, I hope that that was a very uh, good explanation and I hope you were able to get a good, um, you know what I mean, kind of analysis on there. Uh, and IBTRD, thank you for doing these streams. Thank you as well. Absolutely. Great analysis. Following you, man. Thank you for that. You got yourself a follower for Pakistan. Let's go all the way across the world. Pakistanians, let's go. Super happy about that. All right. So. Well, that being said, guys, let's go ahead and look at the indices. Then let's do our daily jot down of all the other pairs and where they find themselves today. All right. So I think I was at Japan 225 uh, on the daily. I'm pretty sure the daily chart. Look at that showing. Is it showing? No, it's not. On the 12 hour, it is showing divergence. Reds followed by green trend line. And then it's falling. So I am waiting for Japan 225 to fall through this trend line to then be able to maybe hit this box. 
New S30, let's look at it on the one minute time frame to see what's happening. All right, so it didn't break to the upside. What did it do? It's just been trashing down here at the bottom. It looks like magic card using flail. Just going up and down, not really doing much. But hey, this is still the last level of resistance. Where's the lowest candle? This thing looks huge right now. I think I should possibly make this a little bit smaller because it's taking like half of my chart. I mean, I do need it to be visible, but like, you know, not that huge. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and see what was the last trading candle that pushed the lowest. The lowest trading candle was this one. Greens followed by red, trend line too tight. Greens followed by red. Let's see if the trend line will be just right. Yay! All right, we're not eating through any candles. That's looking good. If it breaks to the upside, then I'll be taking that buy. You know what I mean? I'd be having a buy limit right here at this area if it breaks. And also at the 50% of this lowest trading candle. Okay, I kind of eyeballed it right now just for Pete's sake to not have to take too much time out of my own personal time that I do need to leave, but as well for you guys viewing at home. So from here, if it does break, these would be the buy limits. And I would be wanting to see it push back to the upside, at least for like, you know, 80, 30, 50 pips to, to the upside. That's what I'd be waiting for for US 30. Now, SPX 500 doing the same exact thing. Same exact thing, okay? Look at it. From here all the way through, just showing a bunch of fucking divergence. So, you know, that's great. Let's see where it wants to stoop down to. Last level of resistance. Greens followed by red trend line. Waiting for it to break to then have a buy limit execution around this area right here. All right, and if I if I was to put it, I'd just kind of flush it out like this, double zeros, because four four three six three is much better of an entry than or you know four three six three point five, but just round it to the next institutional number. Okay, you don't want to have like just millipips going crazy on you. Okay, just a nice little buy limit like four three five two point six. I don't need the point six. Let's just put it at point five institutional level either 0.5 or zero all right that's my recommendation right now we do see it kind of pushing up where is one more hour of london session still open sorry for that until then it's u.s session taking over and then we'll see what happens from then spx 500 pushing up a little bit higher from that entry us 30 finally doing the crossover so if it's doing the crossover I would still kind of keep this at 30, 30, uh, 34,007 just to have the best type of entry, or you could raise it all the way to maybe 34,020 or 34,015. These are all great entries. I would keep it at 34,000, actually 15. That was very sexy. You can see how this was the candle that broke out. Now it's breaking out. And once it touches this entry, for it to hit 30 pips, right, which is TP1, 30 pips, TP2, 50, TP3, 80, TP4, 100, TP5, 130, TP6, 150, TP7, 180, and it just keeps on going from then on and then on forth, okay? Sheesh. It's a mouthful of words that I'm saying at a time, guys. But yes, so this looks like good to go to the upside on the 10 minute time frame. It's still not showing divergence, but I would want to just see it push up from this entry 30, 50 pips to the upside on the one hour. Okay, it did show divergence, which was something that I was talking about yesterday for the last level of resistance all the way through. It did push up around 300 pips now it's falling back down so i would want to see it recover and continue to push back higher which is why in the one minute i feel pretty certain that we will be able to get the entry and maybe hit that 30 50 pips to the upside uh stop loss would be 80 pips to the to the downside from your entry all right 11 11 guys 11 11 eastern time these are beautiful numbers happy 11 11 to everyone uh spiritually and also if you don't believe in spirituality or whatever you don't really practice it you know what i mean this book right here will make you have a good amount of 
information, Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza, teaches you to meditate, teaches you about vibrations, teaching you about how to manifest your thoughts into reality instead of getting on your knees and praying on your knees from a state of, I need, I want, I don't have, please, please, and begging, you would instead be like, hey, not commanding as you're the one source of everything in the universe and you're the creator of everything, but commanding because you are part of that one source. We are all one. You are me and I am you. At the end of the day, we are all come. We are all godly. We all do possess that godly energetic energy, but we have to find it deep within ourselves to understand that and to command these things forth. Not to command again from a level of, hey, I need this and I'm going to have it and I better have it and all this shit, but just I need this, I want this, it will happen. Emotionally putting yourself there, thinking about how it's going to be like when the outcome has already happened, right? So let's just think about, damn, I already hit those 30 pips. How am I going to feel? I'm going to feel happy. I'm going to feel euphoric. I'm going to feel excited. I'm going to feel accomplished. I'm going to feel great. Ba, 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 moving on forward. Again, it's a lot of explanation. As you can see, there's a lot of pages, a lot of knowledge and stuff like that. So do your own research. But look at how it just touched that entry from US 30. Let's go, right? Hopefully it will continue to the upside and then hit again 30, 50 pips. We already said it. 34,015 was that entry and it's above 21 pips. Ah, getting to the 30 pips. Let's see, maybe my fall, whatever, do its own thing. Hopefully, indeed, it will go ahead and hit low. So there we go for US 30, SPX 500. There you go for SPX 500, has not touched an entry again. NAS 100, you little mother gypsy. All right, going all the way down, red candle, that's where we have it. So the same thing that we just did on US 30, everywhere else. Why did I draw it all the way over here? Because if you extend this, which is the lowest trading candle team, this is the lowest trading red candle that showed divergence. Let's go ahead and look at it on the R side. This is our point of interest, which is why we have a visual representation on there so that we never forget. We're like, as long as price over here does anything, bro, it could fucking be doing circles and shit like that, right? Could be doing anything. As long as it doesn't go down lower than this point of interest, Divergence is still valid and we're still waiting for it to climb up on the chart, okay? Since it, since it did all of this, you know what I mean, and did not close lower than this, it's still valid divergence. We're still waiting a pump up to the buy, uh, to the upside. Let me grab my crosshair. Let me close this out. So with all that being explained, this is the last trading candle, red. So following our instructions, which is, let me go ahead and print them out. Find divergence, we found it. Draw a trend line, we drew it. Where do we draw our trend line? Greens, followed by red on top of the wick, making sure that you're not eating through any candles. Um, wicks are okay, candles not okay when you're drawing the trend line. So trend line's drawn perfectly and went ahead and broke out where? With this candle, not this one. This one pierced, pierced, piercing through the trend line. Did not actually go through it. Once it goes through it, that's what I mean by breakout. That's where you put your buy limit. That's where you also then grab your lowest trading candle, 50%, right? You can draw your fib so that you can be as accurate as possible. I like to sometimes just eyeball it and then fix it up myself. So right here, you know, if it's 15,001.1, I'll shave off that middle pip, turn it into a zero, and now it's more sexier uh, than ever, right? Right here, if it's at 0.3, either I put it at 0 0.0 or 0.5. Whatever you find yourself beamable of putting that little pip in, that is your entries for NAS 100. So NAS 100, jot it up. SPX 500, jot it up. And US 30, drawn up, okay? That's everything for the indices. Now let's go ahead and quickly go into the cryptos to end this live stream around 11.30 because then I'm going to have to fucking run everywhere and be on the ball, okay?
pretty sure I could go and make it back and still be there. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so cryptos, guys. Cryptos on the daily time frame, okay? Look at how we were expecting that to come back up and fucking sell, right? Literally. Excuse the language, but it is the truth, guys. We're like really hyped about this because we almost hit it right on the fucking nickel and it would have been extremely sexy. All right, look out on the daily. Divergence from here all the way straight through and then dropped and then went back and then dropped from ourselves. So basically we had the trend line we saw that this broke out, so we put the sell limit right here. The highest trading candle. Look, my fib is my fib is placed there, guys. I'm telling you, I do not change anything. The strategy is consistent time and time again. Literally, I feel like I'm just repeating myself every fucking day. And it, and it is a little bit trippy, but hey, this is what it works, right? This is how it is. Market cycles over and over again. So we saw the sell happening right down here. This broke. This broke the trend line, right? Breakout, broke the trend line, sell limit very tight with the breakout, 50% right here, and bought up, slammed down, okay? Then what happened? On the lower time frames, I think it was either the one hour or four hour time frames. I think it was right here on the one hour, actually. I'm pretty sure it was, a, was, it, the, was it the 12? Hold on, hold on, team. Sorry about this. Excuse this for a second. I think it actually was a four hour time frame where I looked at this and I was like, damn, you know, look at, look at this red candle. Look at this red candle. Look at the divergence that it showed, right? Divergence right here. Bang, bang. I was like, you know what? I think this is going to pump back to the upside. Drew the trend line, waited for the breakout, which happened with this candle. Okay. Not the green one. The green one, again, pierced through the red one broke through that trend line. So after it broke through the trend line, I put the buy limit very tight with where it broke out. And then I put the 50%. Let's see if I'm capping or not at this red candle. Boom, shaka, laka. 50% right there, guys. No fucking cap. So it went into our buy limits, went into that advance, and then shot back up another 3,700 pips. And literally missed our little sell limit by like fucking like 20 pips or some shit. Fucking 44 pips, bro. And then it dumped. Okay, so it went back into the sell limit one more time, which is what I was expecting it for it to do. And has sold 6,200 pips back down. Do I see this continuing to the downside? I mean, I would maybe see this hitting... 40, maybe 38,000. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, right, in particular, not because of the daily time frame, it's actually because I would want to see this show divergence at least on the four hour before it starts to climb back up. And this was our point of interest where we grabbed divergence from before, right? But what did Jacob say? Jacob says that this is our point of interest. Now, what happened? This one sold lower than this point of interest. And if that happens, then this is reset. Now we're waiting to see price go ahead and show divergence, which means what? Price from here is going to go back up, going to go down, going to go a little bit lower, maybe touch this green. But on the chart, let me show you how that would look like for it to show divergence for us to take the buy. Okay. It would then go up, go back down, go lower, but higher on the RSI, all right? And that would be divergence. One more time, more specifically, lower, higher, higher, lower. Grab it from the last level of resistance, which either will be right here or right here. Let's say it'll be right here. Bang. Wait for the breakout back to the upside to then buy back up. All right. Let's see what happens. There's, there's still a good amount of support right here in this area. If not, it'll possibly drop to this level of resistance, which is not new support, or the sub support here at 37,000, okay? Let's see what happens with that, guys. Right now, I'm not really seeing any entry on Bitcoin specifically, and I wouldn't want to buy this market because if anything, and it continues to push down, it's going to break your account in half, and that would be a big-ass sad face, okay? We don't want sad faces. We want happy faces. We want, I understand the strategy. We want, I made my daily goal. We want, I made profit. Thank you so much. We want, damn, the strategy's busting. 
thank you so much for showing this, not, oh shit, I took a trade because, you know, whatever, and then I lost. Like, no, we, we don't we don't try and, and get losses over here in this channel. Thank you so much. So Dogecoin, it's at 20 cents again, guys. Again, I would be buying Doge, okay? My acquaintance, uh, and, I, and I can't, I can't stress that enough. My acquaintance says it's going to go back to five cents. I don't really fucking see that shit hitting five cents. I would want to see it hit maybe 14, you know, at these levels of support and then push back to the upside. But, you know, not specifically touching all the way at five cents. That would be fucking crazy. I would buy Doge if it hit five cents. And I would be putting a pretty good amount of money in there. And then holding for like a year or a year and a half. For it to go back to 70 cents, and then I'd be, you know, flipping that investment to the next level, and I'd be really happy. So right now, what are we seeing with the crypto markets? XRP selling, because on the daily, it's showing divergence, so it's selling. Huh? Divergence, and it's selling. Right here, divergence, and it's selling. Polkadot. We called Polkadot out literally some days ago. Look at it. We are anticipating for it to actually keep on going higher and then fall, but it fell through here. Link USD selling. Ship USD waiting for this shit to pump to the upside. Baba selling. This shit right here is ridiculous. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Cardano selling. All right. Look at yesterday. Bang. Sell limit right here. Advanced sell limit. This I had already drawn in, I think, from September 16th which was my pre past previous live stream, that's when we said, yo, this thing is going to fucking be selling, okay? I'm pretty sure I said it on September 16th. I'm not going to push it up because I don't have that much time anymore. So USD, I still see it selling. Luna USD, I still see it selling. Uh, Zek USD, it's whatever. The dollar. I gave this out on my premium signals yesterday, okay? Hopefully, you guys were able to take it at the entry. Right now, it's only 12 pips in profit, so it's not that crazy, but I still see it either. If it pushes back up higher, that's fine. I still see it falling in the long term. So this is a swing call, but as it continues to swing down and down, I would continue to throw in lot sizes and secure profits. Uh, Euro USD, I see it buying. AUD, USD, GU, and NU, I see them buying. These are my buy limits. Guys, this is on my yesterday's live stream, so don't worry if I'm going a little bit too fast. As well as uh, this live stream, when it ends, you're able to view it back on my profile. So just go ahead and give me a follow. Also, follow the website, jacobnets.com, and give yourself a follow on the free community chat. I'll be closing out the live stream with that explanation. Gold to the upside. Silver, upside. Uh, Copper still needs some time, but hopefully it will grab support and go to the upside. AUD CAD, upside. AUD JPY, downside. CAD CHF, down. Uh, Euro AUD, buying from our entries on the daily. Euro CAD, I've been stressing this out. Even on September 16, I was pretty sure that I said, buy this motherfucker, right? 170 pips to the upside. I still see the possibility of it going a little bit higher despite these little wicks right here okay euro ndd might be buying from this golden area and break through from this yellow line to the upside which is what i'm waiting for euro gbp buying i've said that a thousand times euro jpy selling into the advanced entry i still see it wobbling and then finally buying back to the upside it still needs a little bit of time so don't worry about that signal gp jpy Moving at the speed of a turtle, USD CAD at the advanced sell limit has not bought up higher than this previous one. I want to see USD CAD selling, guys. Do not miss out on USD CAD sells because I know that it's going to be profitable. Either 50, 80, 100 pips, hopefully 300 pips. That'd be fucking fire for it to grab support then at this level, then some divergence perhaps and then buy back up. But USD CAD, I do see it as a sell. USD CHF, I would want to see it come back down and then buy. USD JPY, still selling. I don't see any difference on that. Tesla, I want to see it buying and filling in that gap. Netflix, I do want to see it buy, fill in that divergence and then sell. Amazon, it is what it is. AMC, 
I want to see it buying from this level of 34.85. This is when I said to buy it, and indeed it bought. All right, I had drawn this line, like I think, on the beginning of this month. So there we go. We kind of validate that. Continuing to the upside, let's see. It needs to fill in that gap. GBP AUD, I see it selling to the downside. GA sells. CRISPR Therapeutics, thinking for fucking ever. But I do see it buying at the long term. It filled in this gap as I wanted it to, right? I was like, NZDJPY, we'll sell from this entry. Look at that, September 14. Go back into my September 1 when I was talking about this. And I did say it was going to fill in that gap. It's already up 222 pips. Guys, don't sleep on them. PUBM, I see it going back to the upside. Bitcoin, I have it like this. From low to high on the daily, all right, let me draw it manually so you guys can see that it's not capped. From low, last level of support to high, okay? Look at how it's hitting the 0 0.5 and buying back, which is why I'm telling you guys, it might reach to 38,000, you know what I mean? Which would be around here, the 0 0.618, and then find some divergence and then buy back up, okay? That's why I'm saying that as well. That's another confirmation right there, our fib. GRGW, I see it continuing that divergence, marijuana stocks, and then filling in that gap. IBM, still bearish. H, Home Depot, I wanted to see it filling in that gap and then selling down. UFPI, selling. <sighs> Wayhauser, a lumber company, I see it buying back up into this gap. Eyeball, Starbucks, selling. Nestle, selling. AVNZD, still waiting for this motherfucker. To break it, this is looking like copper, you know what I mean? Showing divergence, but just going one way. I want to see it consolidate, so then buy back to the upside. Ben, falling. Neo, falling. And DCHF, I don't have anything for this pair. Right? Yeah, I don't have anything. QQQ, damn that big gap. Apple, falling. I already said this shit was going to fall. Divergence right here. The new iPhone isn't really that fucking amazing or phenomenal. And also, they keep just fucking sending shit that uh, it's, it's not nothing new, bro. It's just like version 3.0, version 2.0, like the AirPods or, you know what I mean? Like, it's no new technology that's really fucking crazy. They didn't even make, like, a screen that can fold like Samsung did. They just used the same chassis from the old iPhone and just bumped up again the same three fucking components. We always see the same shit every fucking year from Apple, all right? Unless they change the chassis, the memory, the camera, and the processor. No, it has an A17 chip. Like, come on, guys. Same shit. You know what I mean? My A16 chip from my last year iPhone is still running, is still banging, is still great. I don't really need to change my iPhone. GL. This is a big hit on GL. I wanted to see it buying, but I don't know. You know what I mean? This shit's a really big fall for GL. Let's see what happens for them. U.S. oil. I already said it. These were our sell limits. These were sell limits from the one hour. And they've continued to be prosperous all the way to the day of today. 250 pips underneath. So, yes. Japan 225. We already did that one. And that about, uh, that about, that's it. That's everything, guys. I'm in buy with US 30. Can I hold until market close? Hell the fuck no. I don't know why you would do that. When you get 30 or 50 pips, all right, then that's it. You're good. All right, Maduka MM. Again, for Maduka MM, have a profit target of 30, 50, 80 pips. But don't hold the NBC for that long because on the one minute time frame it's very volatile and what comes up will come down and vice versa so i don't usually buy and just hold the whole fucking thing throughout the whole day all right you cannot do that we buy and sell buy and sell buy and sell in the one minute a lot of times Madera J, Rich Rising God. What up, Madera J? Nice to see you back on the stream. A pilot, brother, that bitch Bitcoin still going down. Even if it goes, what do you think about the alts? Will they follow the Bitcoin dominance rotation? Hell yeah, A pilot. That's what I think is going to happen, brother. I've always been saying that on my live streams, bro. Bitcoin is the granddaddy 
every other altcoin is just going to follow what Bitcoin is doing, okay? Which is why if I see Bitcoin being bearish, then I will most likely assume that Ethereum, XRP, and Litecoin, Neo USD, Dashcoin, Polkadot, you know, all of those altcoins. The altcoins in huge rotation, such as XRP, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ethereum 2.0. You know, the more hypey cryptos will continue to fall. That's what I see. So, a pilot, hell to the fuck yes, you're right. So yeah, I still see bit uh, the bitch Bitcoin still falling down as well. Um, Dara J, nice to see you back on the stream, brother. All right, so. By the way, I did not send a heart. I actually cursed, but, you know, it changes it to a heart. That's about it for everything, guys. That wraps up the whole market, the whole shebang. There's nothing really much I can say. That about sums it up. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go. Go hit myself with the fucking death. Go, and that about ends this live stream with a huge happy face on my motherfucking face. We not only caught the buy 30 50 pips at 925 to 930 when it pushed to the upside, it went up to a total of 80. But now we caught yet another fucking entry. Let's go the live streams. 34,015 to the upside, guys. That's what we were anticipating. And as well, did it hit 80 pip stop loss? Hell the fuck no. Did it touch advanced entry? No, but look at it pumping. 80 pips up, right? So don't fucking hold all the way to 4 p.m. That is a really bad idea. That is not how you do it, okay? Um, but yeah, basically, you would want to have a target profit. If you're comfortable with 30, hit the 30 and bringing your stop loss in profit. That's what I recommend very, very much so. I'm not quite sure where I have that actually listed, but somewhere I do have it listed so that you guys can go ahead and understand what it looks like and what I'm usually um, kind of looking for. Well, it's my wife's birthday and I, and I drove her to work and I came back speeding through the highway and I still got on the live stream and we still gave out entries and we still went in profit. Guys, it's a beautiful day, right? So right here, this is what I wanted to show you on the US 30 chart um, under the one minute time frame. I'm not sure if it's this one that we have it on. Uh, I know I'm a little hyper, but guys, I did wake up super early. So you know what I mean? If I'm not hyper, I'm like talking like this and like half asleep, like every other streamer on this bitch. And that shit is boring as fuck to watch, to be honest. All right, so paste it. All right, so this is how it goes, okay? So this is for you, my friend, uh, Maduka. So this is for you, my friend. Adira J, awesome, bro. Send me that message to join the premium. Please join the premium when you're ready to do so. Again, it's $60 a month, so it's not too fucking crazy. But at the same time, I highly appreciate it. Bang. All right, guys. So... With all this being said, once you're already in profit, because I know y'all that took the entry at 34,015, look how much you're in you're you're in profit. You're almost in profit a hundred fucking pips today. The average trader shoots for 50. We already caught 30 slash 50 earlier on in the live stream. This is another 100 or let's say 80, and 80 plus 30 is 110 pips. For today, and on a 0 0.01 using a 1 to 500 leverage, that is around $110. Let's go. So, TP1, 30 pips. Stop profit, 5 pips. TP2, 50 pips. Stop profit, 10 pips. 
TP3, 80 pips, stop profit, 15 pips. So if you're getting really fucking greedy right now and you're like, oh, well, you know, I want to see if I catch 230 pips. All right. Then what I would recommend is one, put another buy limit in this entry, put a stop profit. Right now you're up 80, right? You're almost at that 100 mark. I mean, you kind of did touch that 100 mark. And if you did touch the 100 mark, I would put my stop profit at 20 pips above entry. But if you just want, you could put it 15 pips above entry, which would look something like this. So your stop loss would literally be right here at 15 or at 20. Okay, so if there's a market reversal, all right, you're stopped out in profit is not the crazy profit that you could have made, but at the same time, it's still pushing your account forward and there will be setups the next days to come. I'm very excited for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week, which are the days that follow through this week because there's a lot of good folders on volatility, a lot of high impact folders. Uh, Federal uh, Powell will speak on Friday. There's gonna be uh, some analysis on Powell's analysis on Wednesday and also Thursday. There's a great amount of folders. So this is how you protect your capital. Guys, do not be stupid, okay? Put your stop, pro stop profit, uh, put your stop loss above your entry and hit it as stop profit. So if you get stopped out, you get stopped off in profit and you don't risk your account you don't want to be risking your account guys okay again and if you're happy take the 80 pips take it home guys 80 and 30 110 that's that's happy face you know what i mean if not continue to hold it is up to you again i do not you know financially like manage your account or anything like that you know what i mean and that about wraps up today's session, guys. I do need to go. It's already 11.38. It's past eight minutes past when I was going to leave. This shit went into, it went into the entry here and I got excited and I was literally dancing around and shit like that because it hit 30 pips. And went back into the entry and then climbed for 95 pips. Let's go. Then what happened? SPX 500 went into our entry from when I jotted it up and what happened? 138 pips. Let's go. Let's look at NAS 100. What happens to NAS 100? They're all moving together. They're looking like the dream team out here today. Perfect day today, guys. Wow. 50 pips above entry. That hits 30. That hits 50. Did not hit 80. Sadly, fuck you, NAS 100. But it did go up 50 pips, all right, guys, from our entry, wicked in into our entry. Barely any drawback. SPX, wicked in, barely any drawback. US 30, a little bit of drawback, but it did go ahead and get favorable. So to end this live stream, we'll be going ahead and showing you the website so that for all of you new streamers that are streaming for the very first time, go ahead and join in on jacobnets.com. I'll go ahead and show you the comment over here, Jacob Nets. All right. So Jacob nets.com all right that's going to be the you know what i mean the the website jacobnets.com go ahead and click on the join telegram when you click on that it's going to send you into this little window right here let me go ahead and show you what it's going to look like bang and then go ahead and join the free community Boop! and then you'll be able to uh be part of the community okay if you're interested in the premium mentorship, it is $60, six zero a month, all right? What we do, this is what we do, all right? Live trading sessions, Telegram group, one-to-one -one mentorship. What we offer, this is what I offer, paid membership, access to premium membership. You're gonna get access to all the Academy videos that you don't see here on TradingView. You're gonna get the live trading session via TradingView or, you know what I mean, for Zoom calls, if I do like a special off the grid type of uh, trading session, one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls for all of you, you know, I dedicate at least one hour to an hour and 30 minutes on the Zoom calls on a one-to-one -one private non-recorded uh, session. I teach you my unique custom build strategy. I teach you the divergent strategy. I teach you what indicators. I teach you the numbers on the indicators. I teach you why. I teach you the mindset of behind the strategy on why I do the certain things that I do. And also we get those VIP signals. Let's go. This is a little bit about me. This is me before the stash. Please guys, do not get scammed. Okay. That's the last thing I did want to go ahead and tell you guys. Do not get scammed out. 
if you guys are feeling a kind of, you know, if someone that's, you know, trying to be like me or, you know, pass around like me and be like, oh, I'm Jacob, uh, go ahead and send uh, this money to this Bitcoin address. Number one, I do not ask for a Bitcoin address. I do not ask for crypto transactions. If you want to join the premium, it's through Jacob's, no, it's, yeah, it's Jacob's wizard. Oh, Jake's wizard, Jake's Wizbot, and everything comes from me. My number, 786-387-1606. And if you need me to FaceTime you, Telegram, DM me on Telegram, and ask for a fa ask for a fucking live video. Ask for a video with your with your name on it, like this. You know what I mean? Like some shit like that. You know what I mean? I'll go ahead and be like, I'll write your name. I'll be like, yo, what's up? You know, give me my energy and like that. You can be like, damn. That's the real deal. That's the real guy. I'm not going to get scammed out here. Thank you so much for your time, dedication, for following the streams. Please tune in tomorrow. Much love, prosperity, happiness, and good virtue to everyone here on the live streams. I love you all. Keep going well. Keep doing well. Keep your health. Keep your family. And continue going forward, guys. Much love and prosperity. Peace out. This has been your